Hello and welcome. My name is Jo Neary. I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team. And welcome to this special Worship at Home video, which we've put together with the whole of the Lime Bay Deanery to celebrate our link with the Diocese of Wanderuba in South Sudan. As you may know, the Diocese of Salisbury has a long and flourishing link with Sudan and now South Sudan. And we have had our deanery link for just a few years and our Rural Dean David Baldwin has a, a good email relationship with Bishop Matthew Peter in the Diocese of Wanderuba in the very south, southern part of South Sudan. But as you know, uh, the countries of both Sudan and South Sudan are under pressure at the moment because of COVID-19. And although we hope to have a message from Bishop Matthew Peter, that hasn't been possible. But when we do hear from him, all he ever asks of us is prayer. He asks us to pray for his people, for the diocese, uh, for the churches and the clergy and the lay people there, for peace in his country. And so we commit as a deanery to hold the Diocese of Wanderuba in our prayers uh, week in, week out, as we serve the same God and worship together. Thank you to all the people who've contributed to this deanery service, uh, clergy and members of our school communities, uh, members of the community in Burton Bradstock. And also thank you to Bishop Nicholas for sending us a message and for reminding us of the new diocesan appeal, soap and food, an opportunity to contribute financially to relief work in Sudan and South Sudan. So let us gather together and prepare to worship God. Welcome and thank you for joining us in the Lime Bay Deanery. This service today is in celebration of our relationship and connection between the Diocese of Salisbury and the church in the Sudan and South Sudan, and particularly here in the Lime Bay Deanery, where we're developing a relationship and a link with the Diocese of Wanderuba. And we give thanks for the ministry of Bishop Matthew Peter and all the people in that diocese. Wanderuba, like all of Sudan at the moment, is in the grip of the pandemic that has uh, struck the world. We pray for them. That's all they have to fight this horrible and uh, aggressive uh, pandemic. Today we celebrate that link. So let us continue. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join with us in singing our hymn.
let us come now to our Lord God, who always longs for us to draw close. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face to shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the collect for today. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is from Matthew chapter 11 and is read, to, read for us by the children from Loder's School. A reading from Matthew chapter 11. Now to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group shouts to the other, We played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine, and everyone said, He has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, Look at this man, he is a glutton and wine drinker, a friend of tax collectors, another outcast. God's wisdom, however, is shown to be true by its results. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased to have it happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I put on you is light. This is the word for Lord. The Bishop of Salisbury has recorded this address and reflection for us to celebrate with us as we look at our link with the Sudan. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the service uh, in the Benson team this Sunday and to be part of your launch of the appeal for Wanderuba, the link dice in the South Sudan. Actually, um, you've coincided with a dime, the launch of the diocesan appeal for the South Sudan and Sudan. And we've had a partnership as a diocese for quite close to 50 years. And these are deep friendships that have formed. It's a two-way partnership in which we receive quite as much as we give from seeing the world through the eyes of our brothers and sisters. I've been listening closely to emails from bishops and the archbishops. And in Khartoum, in the Sudan, Archbishop Ezekiel said recently that people there are really struggling because of inflation and they can't buy food. And he said people would rather die of COVID-19 than to die of hunger. In the South Sudan, Archbishop Justin Bardi Arama of Juba has been describing what it's like in a country where so many people have been displaced in recent years, uh, with many of them living out of the country, not on the land, unable to grow crops, where there's still violence in significant areas. 
and where people have been told that they've got to, as we have, lock down. This is a country where that sort of isolation is almost impossible. The churches have been closed, and people are feeling very frightened uh, of something that they cannot see. He says that for them the greatest need is to do with hygiene, personal hygiene. And so we're going to launch an appeal this month as a diocese for soap, for, for hygiene, for, for helping in the South Sudan with uh, that sort of hygiene which will prevent the spread of the virus, and in the Sudan for food, in a way that people will be fed and cared for. Your debriefing with Wanda Roop is a really key part of the relationship. I'm so grateful to you for having established that. And I am here today to wish you every blessing for uh, what you're going to do to raise money for that. I don't see them as competing appeals. I think this is all part of our caring for our brothers and sisters in the South Sudan. The Gospel reading today is fabulous for this. Come to me all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. But that sense of God coming alongside us in Christ and carrying the yoke with us, sharing our burdens and making it easier to travel, together. Um, I really love that image and all of us have found these recent months quite trying. I think we've reached a stage where we're finding it mentally difficult to be as isolated as, we, as we've been. There's huge relief when we see people and meet people and yet we've still got to maintain social distance. We've still got to be limited in the way we do this. We haven't completely opened up yet. And there's a real threat of rising numbers of COVID-19 in parts of the world where we realise this is not yet over. We're linked with the people of the South Sudan, as you are with Wanda Rupa. We share their burden. By travelling with them, we want to give them, actually I do want to raise a significant amount of money, both in your deanery appeal and in our diocesan one, but what we're really wanting to give is that sense of solidarity, partnership, hope, sharing a burden, carrying a load, travelling with them as brothers and sisters in Christ. The Gospel started with that lovely image of piping and playing music and dancing in the marketplace for the children. And it's up to us whether we join in. Actually, we can make a difference if we choose to live in the way that God shows us in Jesus Christ, which is caring for others, loving God, loving our neighbours as ourselves, which actually does include something about sacrificial love. So many of us are finding this difficult, but actually this is the moment in which we want to reach out and to do something for others. In this chapel at South Canterbury, I have a cross, which was given me by my predecessor but one, Bishop John Austin Baker. It's from the South Sudan, and it's a Christus Victor cross, of Christ, as it were, springing, life-giving, leaping from the cross. It reminds me of the joy and the hope of the South Sudanese Christian witness. It reminds me to pray for them every day and to be yoked with them in Jesus Christ, who binds us and carries our loads and causes us to want to be joyful givers in this way of the cross. So, uh, every blessing on your appeal, it's really good to be with you for this Sunday particularly, and thank you for asking me, and may God bless you, and bless us, and our friends, and brothers and sisters, in Wanderuba, throughout the South Sudan, and the Sudan. Amen. We say together the Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of intercession. We begin by reflecting on the role of the army in peacekeeping in South Sudan. Pete Stone gives us a short reflection to lead us into our time of prayer. And then Liz Orza will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. The British Armed Forces have been involved in South Sudan for a number of years, Operation Vogel and Operation Trenton. These are two operations that the British military have been involved with, which has helped build uh, hospitals, it's helped build new roads, it's helped with logistics, and it's also helped particularly with the building of medical facilities across South Sudan. On a deployment with my unit, um, I met uh, a cook um, from the Royal Logistics Corps who had been out to South Sudan for a tour, and she was describing to me the conditions. It was a really interesting discussion because I was hearing firsthand of somebody who had been to South Sudan, who had seen the conditions that we see on a TV screen or we hear about uh, through a newsletter. But she actually described them to me and the heat as well as the desperation of so many refugees. The fact that they struggled and they were waiting outside the British army camp so that they felt safer, that they felt they wouldn't be attacked uh, by rebels if they waited outside our camp. The fact that um, they, when they brought some of the refugees in who were desperate for help, they were able to feed them and make a small difference, making them smile, making them feel alive. Again, feel worthwhile. And she said, described the smiles on the children and the women's uh, faces when food or when they were able to help them. She had a real passion and a pride about the difference that they had made out there. It led me to wonder what difference we can make. When we see it on the news or when we see it in a newsletter, it can feel very remote. But Bishop Matthew Peters asks us to pray. He asks us to pray for his people, pray for him and the other clergy as they make a difference, as they recover from the civil war. It can sometimes feel, is there anything more we can do? But we seem to forget that prayer is such a powerful weapon that our prayers for the people of South Sudan can make a huge difference to them. And for them to know that we are praying for them, we are asking God's peace to fall upon them. And that as they rebuild their country, they have got God's presence with them. God in heaven, we thank you today for your amazing creation. Our world, in all its splendor and diversity. Our humanity, in its capacity to care. Keep us always mindful that we are the custodians of your creation and help us to preserve your world and all its glories for future generations. God our Father, we pray for the nations of your world, that your gospel should reach the furthest corners and that your message of love and peace be extended to all people. Where greed and materialism threaten to deprive others of their birthright, Show us humility and remorse. Where conflicts rage and politicians wrangle, lead us to understanding, reason and resolve. 
God, our Saviour, we thank you for the long association between Salisbury Diocese and the Diocese of Sudan and South Sudan, for the rich gifts of love and fellowship which have been developed over the years, and for the mutual esteem in which we hold each other. We pray a special blessings on our Bishop Nicholas and Bishop Matthew Peter of Wanderba Diocese. We ask that you support the Salisbury Sudan link in all its endeavors, in education, in health, and in the furtherance of peace. In your mercy, loving Father, show us that all life is sacred and each one of us is valued in your sight. We pray today for all those in our world whose lives have been and still are torn apart by fear, by poverty, by disease or by disaster, thinking especially of all refugees and displaced persons. Finally, a prayer from the Church Mission Society. Lord, when our security and comfort make us forget those who suffer, show us your hands and your side. Lord, when we're confused, lost and bewildered, grant us your peace and send us out in confidence to do your will in the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So the Lord bless, oh, bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love to and love serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.